I think a lot of bands are making memes of themselves based on their name. <laughs> if I hear an, if I hear another green goat, wizard goat, any other goat, bong metal. I think, <laughs> bongzilla, you know bong ripper. Last week, I did a <laughs> I did a quarterly review last week. It was like fifty records, man. That's and it was hard. It was hard to get. Yeah, yeah. Like it's hard. Like, sometimes, sometimes that's much easier. Um, but like I had a bunch of shit going on last week, and some of the music was less than stellar. Some of the stuff didn't hit me as hard as some of the other stuff. Let's say that. Uh, and that makes it harder to get through. So, but I did this thing, and it was like, oh shit, here we go. And at the same time, I'm getting mad at myself. Cause I'm not covering other stuff right. that's coming out at the same time. So, so I'm pissed. So I'm pissed off like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, cause I haven't posted the new Mars red sky video yet. And like, why? Right. So you find yourself, you find yourself applying high stakes to low stakes. You know what I mean? Because this, shit, it, it's incredibly important to me. You know what I mean? You have said some very kind things to me in this interview, and I do appreciate it, and thank you very much. But, like, cool. I'm glad you got something out of it. It's what I need to do for me. So, it, it you know, it's it's got to be about that. Um, and But, you know, it's hard to keep in mind as sort of, as things change over time. Right. As as now there there are all these YouTube channels that were not there 15 years ago. There's Spotify that was not there 15 years ago. Bandcamp. Right. Bandcamp wasn't there 15 years ago. I am a notoriously slow adopter to that shit to the point that if you go on the obelisk.net, that has the same theme that it has had since 2009, February 2009, when the site went live. It's the same fucking look. I, it's just, you know. Um, I would count, I would count it a weakness, but like, but you get so into this thing that you forget sort of the world outside and that like your neighbor probably has no idea who Kaya, right? Like, like there's, you know, for most people, for 99.9% .9 of the planet, there is no difference between that shit and Slayer, right? There's, there's nothing like, and, and even if they did know, they wouldn't care. Even if you sat someone down and you were like, no, this is this. You see, this is speaking to this history of rock and roll that's been around for 50 years. And people used, you know, and people started, came from heavy blues and progressive rock. And it became this thing. And this beautiful thing has emerged. And it is now split into, into hundreds of multifaceted micro genres. And these niches within niches within niches that are just gorgeous, full of beautiful, blossoming creativity. It is this entire world in which to immerse yourself. Your entire brain could explode out of your fucking head exp explaining this to someone, and they will not care. Like, it, it, there are there are people on this planet who feel stronger about Taylor Swift than anyone will ever feel about sleep. Right? And I feel like I feel like when you're in this thing, when you're in this community, when this is a part of you, it's hard to it's hard to keep that perspective that like this is a community. And that, and there, there are a ton of communities, and that people come together. So people congregate, and, and 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 you know, if if this is what speaks to me, and this is what speaks to you, someone else has their own fucking thing. That's like another hours with the material that you just brought up, and, and I and I'm hoping, I really am hoping that this wasn't such a horrible experience. You'll be willing to do this again. It was late. Sorry. No, I you were on time. I'm the one, Mister Punctual here with my calendar and my calendars. I have a, I think it's cultural. Okay, I think there's a I know that there's a difference between American embracing. Americans embracing stoner doom um, and then certain areas of Europe. And I have an example for this bias. Uh, my wife was a helicopter pilot and during, during Iraq and, and we, 
she sponsored this Greek officer who was also a helicopter pilot from Greece. And we had a party and there were like 10 other Greek helicopter pilots. Now the odds of this happening are slim. Each one of them is a Caius fan and Stoner Doom fan. 1000 Mods is just coming out. I'm sitting in a room and I'm antisocial and shy at this point. I don't talk. Dude, all I had to do is say, I saw Caius. The room fills and they are asking me who was on base. Was it Nick Oliveri or was it Scott Reader? What was the order of the songs? Was Josh where? I mean, it's great. I think it's cultural. It's I great. think. Europe has a much more open, I think it's more embedded in the culture there yeah. than what it is here. And I think that's unfortunate. It's more supportive there. It's more supportive. Infinitely so. Infinitely so. A band from Europe can get a grant to come tour in America. If a, a, ba a band from America would not get a grant to go to Europe. No, no. Oh, it's a, a band from America can get a paying tour in Europe yeah. play three or four festivals actually make a little bit of money you a band here in america they're self-funding it they're self-funding it through merchandise like i said this opens up a whole thing i think it's cultural dude dude is there anything i didn't ask you in this interview that you really wanted to get off your chest oh uh i'm very mercurial wow did that did I strike a nerve with that? Well, I, don't, you know, I, I just didn't know what you meant by it. You've got different fat. Like when, when you went to St. Vitus, when you walked in, I did not introduce myself. Why not? Because you were busy, man. Look, motherfucker. I know what it looks like when somebody is like, they're mission focused. You just want to get up to the stage, get your camera hooked up. You, and then you got oh, swarmed. Taking pictures. You it. got. I'm so bad. Why are you so good at? It? I'm not, dude. I have been taking pictures at concerts for twelve years. I started doing it. <laughs> I think the first show I did might have been Monster Magnet in New Jersey at Starline Ball. Oh, um, Jesus! But like, I started doing it because I needed something to go with the reviews. And like, it's twelve years later, and I feel like I haven't gotten. Any better. <laughs> it's like. I got a better camera. Great. Well, not only do you have a better camera, but you have the, the lens attachment, the blind, and it's fancy, and you can hold it up, and it's terrible. You're taking it in H I don't HDR. Get, I just, all I want to do is go hang out in the back. It's like I'm up front being pressed. I had, I had a line of bruise on my thigh from where I got pushed into the Vitus stage uh, as Color Haze were playing. Oh, gosh, shit. And it's like, all I want to do is go hang out in the back. And I got to be up front taking pictures all night. And, at, and I love, you know, going back to Vitus, right? At the Vitus bar, once you leave the front, you're done. You're not getting back up there. No, you're Unless not. you're going to be the biggest asshole biggest. in the room, right? Unless yeah. you're willing to be that. And I'm not. You know, if I'm going to be the biggest asshole in the room, God damn it, I'm going to come by it naturally. So, you know, uh, but so I'm up front all night. Oh, I can't stand it. It was like, yeah, it's fucking rocking. It's like, yeah, I'm going to go in the back and drink some water. Chill out. But, yeah. Um, I interrupted you again. No. I'm that's what friend. That's a, No, 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 no. That means you're comfortable. That's okay. good. That's what I want. Okay, Mercurial might not be. There are many facets to you. You. What? Okay, what, what are your three? Okay, give me the three facets. I like rock and roll. I love my wife. I have mental problems. What I see from the outside is you love rock and roll. You're a fan of the language. I'm a fan. Yeah, I do. You like words. All you right, write, I like words. Fine. You write because you have to. You take pictures because you have to. You've totally committed to these things, and yet at the same time, you just want to play, have fun. You just like any other. You're not special because you're you have facets. You just have facets. It's been fun to watch, and you're an intensely private person on the one hand, really, and on the other hand, you just put your life out there. Boom. 
Was I not talking about being bulimic 20 minutes ago? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Intensely private? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You the, the don't the, we're I'm gonna take this part out. You don't want the counselor part of me getting in that head. I'm yeah, like Hannibal. Le- I'm like <laughs> Hannibal Lecter. Let's go. No, you're not bulimic. You're not. You're a person that suffered these things. There are these feelings, these experiences, these values within the world that led to the bulimia. Mm-hmm. To say that you're bulimic is a shield. You become a thing and hit a diagnosis. <laughs> Is acknowledging living with a thing. Um, For some people, to say it's... when I when I, if I call myself that, and I do very much still engage in disordered eating and restrictive eating, okay. always, and I always have, and just is. Um, when I say that, that's my way of acknowledging that it's never really over for me, because it's not. Because that's something that I think about every day and deal with every day. Um, that is a part of my day. Uh, you know, sometimes more than others. Um, usually, I find myself in times of stress, uh, sort of shunting a need to control to that. Um, but like that is that is a presence in my life. That is that is where I come from when I say that. The rest is what it is. I I I started to write when I was like 10 um, and I was maybe 11 and I was in like fourth or fifth grade and I started writing stories uh, and they were funny little stories and I, you know, and I posted them up in a little in recess and somebody would read them and laugh and all that. And it's like, I kind of feel like I'm still doing the same thing <laughs> these 30 years later, um, just in a different context. Uh, and, and, Part of what I think is so beautiful about the music is that I can have my experience of the thing and say it. And someone can be like, yeah, I get that. Or someone can be like, no, nah, I feel like the, I feel like that's not what it is. Like I posted a review of the graveyard last week in that quarterly review I was bitching up about before. And uh, I didn't really care for that record. It wasn't the record I wanted them to make. And I said it, which I don't always do. Um, a lot of the time I just won't write about a thing if that's where I'm at, but you know, I felt like graveyards, a high profile band, it's gotta be covered, right? It'd be, I would feel weirder if I didn't say it. So I said it and a couple of people were like, yeah, no, <laughs> no, you're wrong. And that's cool. That's cool. Maybe I am shit. Um, but the fact that like, the, th- the fact that feeling an entire spectrum of feeling can be accommodated by like a 35 minute LP is just stupidly beautiful to me. Um, and like what people can do in that time to like, I, I mean, I assume make their lives better, but to like make your life better or to make, you know, to, to make their audience's life better, like to make my life better. Like it's, it's, I don't believe in the afterlife. I believe this is it. Um, and I believe that, that all we have are each other is each other. I believe these things strongly. Um, and I feel like art is a kindness. I feel like you just described clear, clearing the path to ascend. I heard clearing the path to ascend for the first time at a listening party at Roadburn 2014. And we were down in some, in a basement of one of the side venues at Roadburn. It was, um, was a church actually. It was awesome. Uh, and we're down in the basement and they played the record. You know, you go and you sit and there's chairs and it's me and like, I don't know, seven other press people or whatever. And somebody's filming it oddly enough, which was awkward. Uh, but they played that album and I just cried. I just, I just cried. It got, I mean, it got to my heart. I just, I'm tearing up now thinking about it. Like, yeah. I, just, I just cried. Um, and I got up and Mike was there and I just got up and I gave him a hug and I cried and I was like, we'll talk when there aren't cameras. Uh, but yeah, it was, uh, that's, I, that song, that record, I, you know, 
very few things, very few albums, tracks, what have you, have have resonated like that. That's a life of a record. Yeah. What are the ones, any of the ones come to mind that have that kind of, you know, cathartic, the release, the connection? Um, That's so specific, that one. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's such a, like that's, that's so much its own thing. Uh, Neurosis, The Eye of Every Storm was, I haven't been able to listen to that band since all that shit with Scott Kelly went down. Um, but I kind of felt like a part of me got ripped away, uh, as a result. Yeah. I struggled with that because I, I think he was being genuine and honest in the music. I'm not surprised. Um, but yeah, it, it, I think it's going to take a lot of people a long time to yeah. separate that out. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I, I still hear stones from the sky in my head just about any time I listen to a post-metal record because they all have that riff, right? <laughs> like, it's all there. It's on every record. It's all there. You can find it. Um, so Molly Yacht Club comes to mind. Definitely. Uh, dude, <laughs> they all have the stones with the sky, stone from the sky moment is what I call it. Um, but yeah, uh, so probably that, uh, but <sighs> Color Haze. Ooh. Color Haze. Temple. Color Haze Temple. Fire on Temple from Color Haze. For... All day. I could do that. For me, it's uh, She Said. I had... Uh, you've really... You've Grace. Really got, Grace. You've really gone out on, on the ledge today, so I, I'm going to go on the ledge. I had... Um, Right around a quarter century, clean and sober, and a professional. And a, a series of events happened. I had no idea that I had lost memory. Okay. And my my mother called and said that this person um, had contacted her, and her name is Tracy. And I'm like, Tracy, Tracy who? And I started naming off all the Tracys. And it was somebody I was actually engaged to hadn't thought of in years mm -hmm. and so i went through this horrific process of all these re returning memories and they returned in real time so um the hall it was during the holidays 2013 and the 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 uh, the events that led to me losing the memory all happened in that time all drug related by the way okay. no trauma no anything it's just okay. when you do massive That's amounts trauma. of methamphetamine I, methamphetamine is powdered trauma it's trauma so 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 i had no idea what to do i was a raw nerve i'm also a practicing counselor at the time okay i turned myself in for a fitness for duty review three times and they still let me go anyway I had no idea how to act, how to behave. My entire history and past was different than what I thought it was. Okay. And I'm writing a book on I have a book on my site I've started that I'm I'm posting a first draft for whatever reason, but I am. One chapter at a time. I had no Why idea. How... Why wouldn't you? Good point. Thanks. I, I'm learning. Uh, talking to you, I learn more about myself. Um you're not mercurial. It's just I don't understand. I can't really just take myself right? too seriously sometimes. <laughs> so Color Haze, that album, she said, mm -hmm. was one of that whole album, especially Transformation, is what grounded me and taught me how to feel. Wow. Had Stefan's um, express. So to hear him play Transformation, it must have been, been incredible. Must have been incredible. I was crying. Yeah. And 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 Julie's looking at me, and she knows how much I love Color Haze. So, yeah, it's great, huge band. What an experience. Um, she said, "Man, yeah." I I was I was I was talking with Stefan about music, whatever. Uh, at some point, Color Haze, and I don't say that like like oh I'm fucking cool because I've, I've I've been in touch with this guy for like twenty fucking years. Okay, like we've yeah. you know, fine. Yeah, uh, I get, yeah. You know, uh, it's, 
So anyway, so I'm talking about it and 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 he said something about like it wasn't about she said specifically, it was in another context. And he's like, you know, sometimes you just don't he's like, sometimes there's just a song you get to write once in your life. He's like, yeah, he's like, you, you get to do it once. And that's it. And I was I was like, what a beautiful idea that is, right? That's incredible. Like this, you know, and it's true, right? Like even, you know, they couldn't do that record again. That took that record took them four years to make coming off of all, which was also brilliant. Um, but like, you know, they had to build the studio and then record the album and then break down the studio and rebuild the studio and record the album again to make that. And then you get into the the horns and the strings and the the depth of that arrangement. And the first version of that album that I got in 2012 was, I guess it, it was the first master, the first pass master. And it had these kind of uh, extra sounds, extra ambient sounds. There were, there was, there's bird song on transformation because you're hearing the waves at Duna Jam. But like when the record was over, they walked away. Like you heard it, right? Like they put their stuff down and they walked away at, at the end of the album and you hear it. And like, and you hear other little things going on in the studio. There's a little bit of conversation. There's a little bit of this. And like that sort of just made that record breathe for me in a way that most did not. That's one of the longest album reviews I've ever written. Um, it was that and actually Neurosis's Honor Found in Decay, I think, was even longer. Uh, which, you know, that's that's not a brag. It's just trivia in my own head. But uh, but yeah, there was there was a lot to say there. It was that's a a singularly beautiful album. I, I think it's a generational album in a lot of ways. <clears throat> in that well, it, it it's a event. I can pontificate. I can go on gone for hours. Please. I'm I'm finally starting to hear the color haze influence. In the broader community, it's the smaller bands. It's the bands, the small outfit out of Poland or Hungary or Italy. Um, believe it or not, some band in the Midwest that it's not that they're copying Color Haze. It's just Color Haze, they're like the same thing as um, um, Catharsis. It's a different definition of heavy. Mm -hmm. Heavy doesn't have to be unpleasant. It doesn't have to be loud or bombastic. It can take you on literally a trip. And when you're when you're done listening to it, you're not the same. No. Other music isn't the same. And I think Color Haze has consistently put that out. Their last album did poorly in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was what like it if I honestly think if someone wants to get into Color Haze, Sacred is the album to start with. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I I would generally say with Color Haze, the latest, and work your way back. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If, some, if, if anybody out there is... Yeah, no, I would, I would advise that for sure uh, as a general method. Um, I agree with you. Different sort of engagement with history and rock in that than in Yob, certainly. Yob or more sleep from here, neurosis from here. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, that band, Color Haze to me is is a, a generational band. Um, and I feel pretty fortunate to like hear it, to be alive while that is being made. Uh, cause I do, you know, cause I, I there is that resonance there that is rare. That was rarefied air at the uh, Desert Fest, them being, and they didn't really fit in. You know, you know, they're no. their own, they're their own thing. Yeah. Not the Va Valley of the Sun was brilliant. I thought they, I very really good, loved them. Very good, very good stage band yeah. they are. Although they're also but very good recording. Band. I'm not sure that Conan and and. Color Haze had the synchronicity. I like that, um, though. I like that. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. You know, Wind, wind Hand was the bridge. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> you know, you see something. I like a, a festival where 
you know, and, and Desert Fest New York has had kind of this sense of curation, right? It's like they're bringing you these bands for a purpose. You know what I mean? And even Windhand, who were like a last minute fill in, right? It's like they they serve the purpose. They were that bridge. Um, and and I feel like sometimes if you get a stage like the outside stage, where it was Mondo Generator and Brent Bjork Trio, like you can put a narrative to that. You can make a story out of that. And, oh, I'm a sucker for a story. So there you go. Um, so that worked really well for me. Um, but but Color Haze on that bill, I mean, it didn't matter, right? They were there. That was the that was the thing. You know, even that if was... they say fit or they did, who cares? That's it's it's a it. It's funny to 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 think of them as like a spectacle because they're not unless you count Manny playing drums. But oh well, King Crimson. They're a spectacle in the same way yes. that Crimson is. And, and by the way, he could easily fit in with that trio of drummers. Yes, he is. That is one of the best drummers I've ever seen on stage. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I have to wrap this up because I have patience. <laughs> I hate to. No. Dude, I'm going to, I'll probably edit the mercurial part out. And it, was, uh, guys. it was like the thread going through the whole thing. I, Come on. I'm going to have to do this one in two parts. All uh, right. It's, it, no, no, God, I could, Jay, I, I could talk to you like this for hours. It's just fun. I'm around. Look, you ever want to do this again? Give me fifteen minutes to notice if I have, if I have time. Um, I'll Thank you. Stop recording at the very least. Thank you.